Review copy provided by Nintendo. Thanks, Nintendo! I... Hey there, friendos! How you doing today? I am here with my review impressions of Fire Emblem Three Houses, and I call it a review impressions because one, I am very immature and I like silly words, <laughs> and two, it is sort of in between a review and an impressions video. Uh, it's a game that's big enough that I, uh, one sitting, like generally a first impressions video is like my first day with a game. I wanted to do more than that. That's not going to cut it with a game like this, but at the same time, it's so big that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish the entire thing. Um, I really want to, but you just never know with so many games coming out. By the time I was able to get out of review, it'd be so late, no one would even watch it <laughs> anymore. So I don't even know if that's quite worth it. So it's kind of in between. You know, I've played it more, substantially more than I would with a first impressions video, but I haven't beaten it yet. I haven't gotten like really, really far into the story. So that's what I generally do for review. I like to finish it at the very least. Um, so this is, you know, a fair amount of meat to it uh, that I've played through. Um, as with many, many games on the Switch that I've reviewed, I will say that I do not have a lot of experience with this series. This is kind of my first one to get into. Um, and actually, I haven't actually played, fully played, any Fire Emblem game. I had the one in the Game Boy Advance, and my friend borrowed it and never gave it, gave it back. <laughs> never played that. I played the demo for Awakening on the 3DS like a hundred times. I really enjoyed it. I just... Never got the game. So this, I was very, very excited to finally get my very first Fire Emblem game. And wow, what a Fire Emblem game to start with <laughs> from the from the sounds of it. Sounds like a lot of people are having a whole lot of fun with this one. And uh, I can say that I am too. But before I get ahead of myself, if there's one thing that really stands out about this game, it is the monastery. And uh, I... I don't know exactly the last couple titles, they might, it looked like they had some sort of thing where you could run around a little bit, I'm not exactly sure, but it sounds like for the most part, these have just been series of levels, maybe like a map or something like that, you just play, you know, match after match or whatever. Um, this monastery is like a giant hub world, and it's, um, it's really awesome. Like this, this is exactly one of those things that I'm always gunning for in games. You know, it's, it's the whole idea of having a simple world map versus a hub world in say a Mario game. Uh, you know, having a world map, it just adds so much to the experience. It makes the world feel more real and all that stuff. Um, functionally, it's not always that different. In this case though, you can see that yes, it is functionally very, very different because it's not an actual hub world where you're like connecting to levels, but it's like, it's this thing that you do in between fighting. You're a teacher at a school, there are kids all over the place and you can run around talking to people, doing activities and everything. And just the simple concept of it is great. It's just, it's taking the idea of a tactics game and adding something new to it. It's adding to the experience, just giving you more to work with. It adds flavor, it adds context for the fighting. It feels, uh, it adds motivation, it adds feel to, you know, I'm always talking about feel. So as a concept, I really, really love it. And it is, um, it is immense how many things you can do here at the monastery. Like, I mean, I'll, you'll spend hours if you want to, just sort of running around and you can go fishing, and you can, uh, yeah, obviously you can buy stuff, um, different ways to interact with all the different characters. You can share meals with them. You can do some gardening. And the game uses a calendar system. So you're like, you're constantly going through the calendar and landing on certain days. And I think that's really, really clever because a school has a schedule on any given day. You do different stuff on different days of the week. You only have a certain amount of free days per month and just, oh, a battle will be scheduled on this day. It's a perfect way to just wrap everything up and deliver it to you in a constant way. Some days just have one thing, but other days you can choose. You can choose to explore the academy. You can choose to just fight and get some extra XP. You can do lectures. And all of this stuff that you can do here, it contributes to your your guys, your units, and you, all of your stats. Whereas before, you know, generally you're you're fighting and gaining XP and that's how you're doing it, at least most of the games like this that I've played. In this case, everything else you do contributes. And a lot of it, uh, the more you do with other students and the more they work together, they get support levels and the higher their support, the better they work together. And it's, um, it's terrific because all of this stuff, it, so far, at least in my experience, it feels like the absolute perfect mix, like the perfect place in between being helpful, but not being strictly necessary. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really honestly feel like it is worth investing in all of this stuff because it's constantly 
It's, it's all these little rewards, all these teeny little rewards, micro rewards, I like that term, all over the place. Everything you do, oh, it added a little bit to this stat, it added their support level. Constantly, the game is always giving you that that feeling, that little teeny tiny feeling of accomplishment with everything you do. It's just useful enough for me to want to do, but at the same time, I don't feel pressured into doing it. I know that at any given time, if I don't feel like running around the monastery and uh, finding lost items and returning them to their people, or giving people gifts, or all, the, or just talking to people with, with bubbles over their heads that says they have something to say, even if I didn't feel like doing that, I know I could just battle. I could just probably ignore that. Like, it might make the game a little harder if you don't have all this extra stuff, but it's probably still totally manageable. And maybe it wouldn't, because if you're playing on normal mode, at least, you have a lot of fights you can do. You can just do a little extra grinding. So it's great. I feel like if that isn't your cup of tea, all this extra stuff, you don't, I don't think you necessarily have to. You can kind of just dive into it, but it's not so, you know, it's worth enough to make me want to do it. If it was all too incremental, I wouldn't feel like it was worth it at all, especially because lots of interaction with people in these kinds of games. Sometimes if it doesn't click the right way, I don't quite want to do it. So I just, I feel like that's terrific. And speaking of people interaction, um, the characters, I'm not a huge fan of all of them. I, I chose the uh, the deer, the deer house, whichever the, the, pur the purple rainbow, beige chartreuse deers, whatever they're called, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> chose that one. Um, in the end, uh, I just kind of chose the one that I liked the characters more, and the other two, the leads, just kind of seemed like they were the same. So I went with Claude, because he was a little more laid back, seemed kind of cool. I fully admit I am not a big fan of anime and the anime style. You go unsubscribe right now <laughs> if you don't like that. It's just not really my thing. It's the reason I don't touch a lot of JRPGs. I don't like the tropes. I just, it's just not my thing. It's cool if it's your thing. It's not really my thing. Um, though I am impressed for a lot of reasons. Uh, I, I impressed, like, I don't necessarily like a lot of the characters. I even like went down character bios for each of the houses. And the ones that I picked, half of them, I kind of even dislike. <laughs> Yet at the same time, they are well written enough and well voice acted enough that I find myself caring about them a lot more than I expected. I'm finding myself, I'm becoming invested in them as characters, and that really is a testament to to the writing. It's um, There are so many interactions between characters in this game, it's staggering. It's absolutely staggering. And you know what? They are all voice acted. They are all no no going halfway this time. It's not like Zelda. We're like, oh, the main cutscenes are voice acted, but none of the rest. No, it's like, it's everything. And these characters, there's so many of them. They're constantly talking to each other. And in fact, you like go into battle and uh, if they battle enough together and their support raises up, then you get the option in one of your menus to uh, initiate a little cutscene where they just like, they just talk. They have a little like one or two minute long conversation and that raises their support level. And I've, I imagine you could probably do this. I don't know how many of these conversations there are, but they go across like every single character in the house. And I haven't got, I've only gotten one recruit from a different house, um, but he has these too, suggesting that all of the characters from all the houses have multiple levels of interaction with every single other character. And it's amazing. Like I, I found that menu where they had the conversations. I literally probably spent 45 minutes or an hour just watching through conversations. And when you do, they, it says, oh, their support was raised to such and such. And it's like, I'm so surprised by how into it I am. <laughs> really, really honestly surprised. It doesn't seem like the sort of thing I would be into, but just the writing is good. I'm really impressed by the writing. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know, sometimes it's a little bit, I don't know, the kind of silly stuff you get in like fantasy games. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to write for, I get that. Um, for the most part though, it's just, it's great and the characters are fun. Uh, a lot of them are fleshed out. They've got backstories and previous interactions with each other that they allude to. And the voice acting, it's just amazing that they were able to fit that much in there. And it's, I'm really sensitive to the voice, to voice acting thing. I'm a total subs, not dubs kind of guy. I just, there's just certain aspects, especially with like anime and anime inspired stuff. There's certain, I'll just call it a style <laughs> that I don't really like. And uh, so that is really saying something when I say that here, it's good. I, I like it. It's, it's definitely got that sort of feel of like, they all went with the first take and they didn't always have the best context to properly deliver the line, but that's like, 
totally to be expected. I mean, I mean, you get that even with like Elder Scrolls games. It's it's the exact same thing. It's almost necessary. You can't labor over every line when you're recording fifty thousand lines of dialogue or whatever. So yeah, I'm really impressed by it. Just the sheer number of lines, and they're all animated too. You know, they're not super detailed in their animation. They have to use some tricks here and there to kind of like hide what they're doing off screen or whatever. But again, like it's it's great. They're not standing there just staring at each other blankly. Um, it's amazing. I'm, I'm really impressed by it. It feels like a, a very great luxury, and I'm I'm sorry to bring this up here. I'm not, I'm not, I just did that Pokemon video, and I was kind of, you know, I'll say accusing Game Freak of not wanting to spend the time to make all the Pokemon, because that's like so many Pokemon and so much work, but like, I don't know. I'm just looking at this right here, this Fire Emblem. Like, that was a lot of work. <laughs> they could have looked at all that, all those characters and said, one, it would be too much work to write individual unique interactions between every single one multiple times and all these different stories and it would have been too much to voice act every single one they just kind of did it they just kind of did it i'm sure it was a lot of work but they did it and i really can't even tell you how much i appreciate that they did the gameplay i can't even i don't even have too much to say i mean you know it's it's the tactical gameplay you move your units around you have turns, different units to different amounts, and all. I mean, you know, it's 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 your basic stuff. If you have any idea what Fire Emblem is, you basically know what it is. So I'm not going to go into too many details. I will just say though, it's really great. Like there is a reason I played the Awakening demo so many times because the core gameplay is just really good. And um, in this case, I really like how each type of unit, uh, at least between like melee, you know, weapon users and bow people and magic persons those are the official names of those guys especially between like those three main kinds of units um i'm surprised that i like each one when i started i was like oh i was a little wondering if i should do the class that focuses more on like lances and stuff because i'm more of just like a melee guy um but i'm seeing that i i like them all they all have really great benefits i'm liking magic i don't usually go for magic in games I like magic a lot more than I expected. It's just, it's really useful. You've got the range, but it's still, I don't know, I don't know everything, but they've all got their pros and their cons. And usually I will focus on one in a game and just try to go for that. But I'm enjoying having a variety. And even within each unit, um, I like having a variety. I like giving them two different things they can do. So they're all useful in each situation. And that's what's so cool about this is how customizable your units are. Um, they tell you that it's a big decision to choose a house because this one's magic and that one's melee and, and this one's archery. Um, but in the end, it really only matters what characters you like. Like I said, I chose the one I like the characters the most um, because you can customize your units just so much. You can get them just training. And I mean, you know, people have different... Uh, different skills, natural skills, but you can kind of, some of them you can turn around if they have a hidden ability or a hidden like inclination. Um, you could just give them any weapon you want and start training them, especially with all of the different things in the monastery and all the extra stuff. You can put stats at different things. It's just, it's really awesome. And, and I don't, I'm not currently seeing the need to customize them too far and like break the mold and, oh, I'm gonna make this guy a totally this when he's supposed to be that. I'm mostly going with what they want, what they are inclined to do. Um, but knowing I have that little bit of wiggle room, I have used it some, and I just really appreciate it. I just, I don't know, I love the variety, and it's its great. Like, if you're a Fire Emblem veteran and you're into this kind of stuff, like, there's so much you can do. Uh, back on the gameplay, though, um, I weapon durability is something in this game. Uh, instead of just having your sword and attacking with it, every time you attack, it uses some durability on your weapon. And if you use special attacks, and that's what's a really clever thing. It doesn't have MP necessarily. You use extra of the durability on your weapon to do it. And um, so far, at least I, that I've seen, you don't repair them. You kind of just buy or gain new ones. So it's um, it's interesting. It's, it's sort of like how in Zelda, I, I enjoy... I don't know. I know a lot of people hate weapon durability, but I, I like that aspect. It, it adds a little bit more kind of strategy to it. And I also like how the different weapons aren't always necessarily better. You know, like when you first start out, it's all iron swords and steel swords. And the steel sword does more damage, but it's also a little heavier. So sometimes it is more worth it to go for the iron one 
because you're going to get like a double strike on them because your speed is so much higher. Or sometimes you'll revert to your iron one just because you know you don't need to, need to do that much extra damage to a guy because someone else is going to finish him off. So you conserve your more powerful weapon. It's just there's there's a... There's just so much to it, and I, I love that aspect of it. And overall, there's just so much to it, and I'm it's overwhelming. It's really overwhelming at first, all of the options and what to do. I'm still getting to grips with what all the numbers everywhere means. <laughs> I'm still trying to get it because there's just so much, but it's not necessarily too overwhelming because I'm also constantly feeling propelled forward. I want to learn more. It's not like, I don't know, there's some like JRPGs, I look at them and I'm just like, this is a whole bunch of, just in one ear and out the other. I can't even process what's, <laughs> what's going on here. But this, I'm uh, slowly growing in the game and understanding how things work. And then I'm wanting to explore other things and other options. And it's just great. Um, also, they got rid of the, the, the weapon triangle. I knew about this. You've got like axes, lances, and swords, and it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. Um, I didn't get to play a bunch of games with that naturally, but I, where I'm standing, I'm happy they got rid of it. I just don't like it as an idea. It's a little too limiting. It's like, uh, it's kind of like how when I played Pokemon cards as a kid, me and my friends never, ever, ever used weaknesses and resistances. We just didn't. It just kind of, I don't know, we're fighting and it's like, okay, well, you're going to win. You, Your guy beats my guy. So I don't know. I'm glad there's a little more nuance to it this time. There are certain units and things that are more effective against different things or a weapon or an ability that's better against different things. So it's... um. Yeah, nuanced is the word. It's it's just a little bit more, there's more detail to it rather than just like, well, I gotta fight this one guy with my other guy and he's gonna lose because he's this type. I don't know, so I like it, at least. It's just, it's very clear to me. Like, I haven't played other Fire Emblems, but even just looking at it, I can see that this has been refined over the years. And that's exactly what I wanna see in a game that has so many entries, or in a series with so many entries. That's what I wanna see is just like, the quality of life is so high. There's so many, just even just when you're about to fight a guy and he gives you the forecast and you can cycle through different weapons and abilities right there. You don't have to back up and change them somewhere else. Just the way that the menus work, it all works so well. And you can just tell that this team has been doing this for years. You can tell that they're not starting from scratch each time. Like they know how to make Fire Emblem games and they get better every single time. I assume, at least in this case, it just, it's, it's phenomenal. I am more confident saying this next part because of how much I otherwise like the game. Because of all that, I'm more comfortable in fully admitting how horrible this game looks. <laughs> I'm sorry if this comes off as too harsh. This game is ugly. It does not look good in my opinion i don't know what happened here i i don't know if just because like these guys have been working on mostly handheld games for so long they didn't know how to make a better looking game um you're on battle and like just looking at like the rocks and the trees it's abysmal <laughs> it's really bad people are like oh it looks with different games they use oh it looks like a ps2 game and they say that as like an insult but it's usually not true in this case it's absolutely true it literally looks like a ps2 game <laughs> and even like running around the monastery like your your characters are decently well detailed all of the individual people have really good character models they look good um when you put them against these drab, gross, boring environments, they just look super out of place. Just, I don't know, the environments are awful. The trees look so bad. Everything is just so boring and dull and low quality. And considering how the game looks, there's no real excuse for it to be coming in at as low resolution as it is. I don't know the exact resolution, but I know that it doesn't feel like it employs anti-aliasing like anywhere. So everything is just jaggy. So like whenever you're like moving the camera slowly or a character or something is moving slowly, you get that nasty jaggy effect just on everything. And then like the characters have this like kind of cell shaded thing to them. But since it's also not anti-aliased at all, it just it's just this pixely mess and like the particular shading on the characters you move the camera around them and like the weird shading like changes as you move and different parts feel like they're melting into each other and it's just oh i don't know it's like this this nice extra little touch the game needed and it just it didn't really get 
and it looks better in handheld mode to the point where like it's less noticeable because especially because of the 720p screen it almost seems like they developed the entire thing <laughs> on a switch like on a tiny little screen and they finish the game and they're like all right throw it in the dock oh yeah whoops oh yeah we forgot to we forgot that it's that it goes on the tv as well oh uh, well, uh, our bad so i don't really know what happened there intelligent systems they've you know i don't know about the fire emblem team specifically i don't know how they split up their company they've done amazing good hd games we've seen before so i don't know what happened here I'm happy for you if you think it looks okay, but I think it looks really dreadful. <laughs> it doesn't matter. In the end, it doesn't matter that much because the game is otherwise so good. But man, running around the monastery and everything, it just, I do wish it did not look quite so, it's just uh, very, it's just very cheap, not very detailed at all. And it doesn't even run that smoothly. That's the thing. Like there's not a lot going on at any given time. None of, nothing that is happening should be very taxing on the Switch. And yet it doesn't even always run at a steady 30 FPS. And when it does, it's, it's just at 30, so... And especially in handheld mode, I get a little bit more chugging. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it hardly matters because this game has just a wealth of content. A wealth of just depth of, like, what you can do. And, uh, and of course, like, the replay value. Like, I, you know, I haven't beaten the whole entire campaign yet, but you choose one of the three houses, and, like, I'm sitting here interacting with these characters specifically, and I know you can end up recruiting some later, um, but there's other story stuff that happens because of your specific house, and, of course, earlier in the game they're interacting, so I'm sure that it would be great to do a new game plus and just try a different house and have a totally different experience, and and then just how big and huge the game is. Even, even barring that, there's just, there's so many ways you can play it and so many ways you can train your units, it is, a, it is a wealth of content, an absolute wealth of content. It's that perfect formula where it was easy enough for them to set up like the, the skeleton, the structure, the formula of how it works, and then just to build tons and tons of maps and things on top of that and just add in all the stuff for you to do. It takes it takes a lot of time, but it's fun to do. You know what I mean? Like I could see myself spending 100 hours on this game easy before I get bored. <laughs> I really could, like de and depending on how, how detailed you wanna be in everything you do. Um, it's really good. I'm super duper enjoying this game. If anyone is a fan of any of this, tactics games, RPGs, um, especially if you like interacting with characters and getting involved in in subplots and all that stuff and managing units and everything oh my gosh you can't can you find a better game than this this is really terrific i'm enjoying it so so much more than i expected i knew i would like fire emblem but it's all that extra stuff that i'm surprised has pulled me in so much i don't give review impressions official scores um if i were gonna score it though i'm 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 on track to giving it a seven for sure it's just that good. It's so refined and good. Um, there's like the tiniest chance that the graphics would bump it down a number, but I think at least as it is now, just barely, it'd probably save itself just for still being that good since that doesn't affect too much, you know what I mean? Maybe on a different day, I would say something different, but at the moment I will tell you, maybe six, very likely a seven. That's how good this game is. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about this game down in the comments. Is this something you're interested in? Is this something you're already playing? I imagine you're probably already playing it because everyone's already playing this because it's a super good game. I will catch you later and I love you and have a good day.